Okay, hello everybody, Hirsch here, and welcome to my very first Java tutorial. Now, this is going to be a series of tutorials starting very basic and working up into quite advanced text-based Java applications. So, as I just said, we're going to be doing text-based applications. They're not going to be, they're, we're not going to do anything with the GUI in this series, though I will have another series coming out on um, making a GUI using Java. But anyway, so in this tutorial series, I'm assuming that you've installed Eclipse already, which is probably the best IDE to use. And um, I'm assuming you have a little bit of knowledge as to how to install programs. So I'm going to assume that you are able to install Eclipse. If you Google it, you'll find it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have time to show you guys. Anyway, so um, in this tutorial, we're going to be going over some very simple applications. So once you have Eclipse up, you won't have any of these projects here. Um, I've created all this stuff. And so you can just create a new project and go to Java project. And we will call our project tutorials. Uh, tutorials. OK. Um, and you can leave everything at default for now. Hit next. And also leave this just at default. So just hit finish. And as you can see, we have a little folder here and it says tutorials and inside it we have the source and JRE system library now the source folder is where we're going to be putting all of our classes which are essentially the things or pieces of code and stuff that execute and run our programs they perform all of the functions and things that we need to actually happen now the JRE system library is where all of the resources are for actually running everything and that's where and we'll use libraries to put in any other resources that we might need such as images or stuff though those will not be in this tutorial anyway so right now as you can see we have nowhere to type if we try to type it won't do anything so we need to create a class so the first class we're gonna do is we're gonna click on new Java class and I will just call this lesson one so in this, just leave everything at default. Make sure you uncheck public static void main string args. Uh, we're going to put that in manually, and I'll try to explain a little bit what it does. It'll make more sense later. But So just click on that green button there, open this up, name it whatever you want, and hit finish. And look, we brilliantly now have this awesome thing we can change, and this is a program with a whole class in it. So what can we do with this? Well, we can hit the run button and error could not find or load main class tutorial one. So what does that mean? Well, essentially what happens is in a class, um, you can have as many classes as you want, but Java has to know where it's going to start executing. Like say you have 10 classes and they all do different things. Java doesn't know which one it's going to run first. So you always have to have a main method or a main well, yeah, a main method so that Java knows that this is what it's going to run first. And then from that main method, you can call other classes or other or constructors or whatever you want. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the main method right now. So the way to do that is to do public static void main string and then put in two brackets like this and then type in args. And then you want to do open curly brace and then the close curly brace should come automatically now what exactly is this well this is making it a public uh, well okay I'm not sure if I'll go into detail about all this but this makes it public and then static means it's not going to change the uh, data and then void means it doesn't have to return anything and then main string args um, means that well we'll ignore that for now but regardless you're going to use this every single time so you should probably memorize this just memorize public static void main string args like this and you're gonna have to have this in your program at least once in every single program unless you do something weird I don't know okay so now if we run this oh great it ran but oh did it run well yes it did run but as you can see here it says terminated now why did it do that well it ran the program it came into the main method it ran the main method and there was nothing in the main method so it exited that then it exited everything nothing happened basically um so let's say we want to test this so what can we do well we can say system dot out dot print uh hello whoops uh hello okay 
So now, if we run this by hitting a little arrow, hello! So that is just quick proof that this is actually running. Now, what does this do? Well, Java, when we hit run, Java goes in, it finds the main method, which is here. Then it runs the first thing. So this is essentially how you print out text in Java. So system.out.print, and then you put in your text. Now, let's say we want to print out two lines. So let's do system.out.print world. Yay. And always put a semicolon after stuff. I'll go over that in a second. Now hit the play. And look, hello world. But I put them on two lines. Why didn't Java put it on two lines? Okay, well, essentially, Java doesn't do anything you don't tell it to do. And this is true for most programming languages. We, not once in this program, said that it needs to go to the next line. And you have to do that manually, say, move to the next line. And there are a couple ways to do that. One thing we could do is we could say system.out.println, or print line, and that will make um, the next, this will be on its own line, so therefore the next thing will be on another line. So that's one way to do it. Or what we could do is we could print that and then do system.out.print uh, print ln. So that will print out a blank line and that achieves the same result. So that's just a quick example of how we can make a simple hello world program. So I'm just going to do it the efficient way by putting a print line there. And if you're wondering uh, how I'm running it, there is a shortcut for run. I reset mine to F5, but I, you can just hit the run button. Um, so anyway, that's how you simply print stuff out. So now I'm going to quickly go over how Java works with this stuff. So essentially the way this works is when it goes into the main method, it finds a bracket. Now, and this applies to most programming languages. These curly braces, that's I think their technical name, it runs uh, anything inside these curly braces is inside the main method. So as you can see, when we click the ending curly brace, it goes up to this one. So these two are connected and everything inside this is the main method. Now this one is our uh, main class, so or main, yeah. Essentially, everything you do is going to be inside these ones here. Now we could say put in another method. I won't do that now, but and but well, I'll show you public static void uh, hello. Okay, so this has now created a hello method, and as you can see, we put in two more brackets here. And these, so anything in here would be part of the hello method, whereas anything in here is part of the main method. So that's pretty simple. Now, how do semicolons work? Well, essentially, semicolons tell Java that it's ending a specific statement or something like that. So, for example, say we were to uh, print something out like this. If we take out the semicolon, we could uh, potentially or let me let me show you how we can do this. We could put in a semicolon there, and that would still work. It would do the exact same thing, because Java will consider this all one line until it gets to a semicolon. So basically, um, the function of that is so that you can space this out however you want for the most part. I'm not sure if that okay that'll work too. I, I don't think that'll work. No. Okay, so as long as you have the words in one place, you can space this out however you want and you will achieve the exact same result. And that's the purpose of a semicolon. So semicolons tell it that this is the end of the function rather than a line break. And this is really useful for organizing long lines of code and stuff because uh, rather than putting everything into one line, you put it into two lines and just put a semicolon at the end. So that's basically how you use curly braces and semicolons in Java. Anyway, guys, I think this tutorial is running a little bit long. I hope you've learned something. In the next lesson, we will go over creating an actual interesting program, and I'll, re I'll talk about more stuff. This was more an example of just basically what Java can do simply um, and how easy it is to learn. So anyway, please subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed, and as I just said, subscribe, but do that if you want to see the next tutorial. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.